Things to know, new concrete. Camouflage your concrete! Yeah! Although there is really no age limit as far as how old a piece of concrete can be in order to use acid stain on it, there is a limit in how new it can be. Concrete must be at least 28 days old in order to apply concrete acid stain. Actually, the rule is concrete must have cured for 28 days or until it has cured to one uniform color. When you first pour concrete, it'll come out of the truck dark gray, and then as it starts to dry, it'll start to dry patchy white, and you'll have patchy white, patchy gray. And uh, once it has cured to one uniform color, or 28 days is passed, whichever comes first, you can apply concrete acid stain. Whenever you're pouring new concrete and you intend to stain it, pour or have your contractor to pour some sample pieces. They can be 12 to 18 inches square. They really serve two purposes. One is after the concrete is cured and before you stain your slab, you can use these pieces for tests. You can stain these individual pieces of concrete with different colors to be sure that you're gonna lock the color before you do the actual slab of concrete. And then afterwards, you got some really cool stepping stones. Okay, now this is important. Do not use a curing agent. Never use a curing agent on new concrete that you intend to stain. The curing agent will act as a barrier and the stain will not be able to penetrate it. You'll have to go back in and strip and usually sand the curing agent if you use it. The way that you can check for a curing agent on a slab is you can first just pour water on it. If the water soaks right in, then it's not very likely you have a curing agent. If the water just kind of sits there on the surface, and especially if it beads up, then you definitely have a curing agent or a wax or a sealer or some other contaminant and that must be stripped off prior to staining it. Another way to check for a curing agent is to just get right down on the concrete, down on your hands and knees with a pocket knife and scrape the surface of the concrete. A curing agent will be like a waxy substance on the surface and if you can scrape off that waxy substance off the surface then you know you've got a curing agent that needs to come off. Curing agent is not always visible to the naked eye. A lot of times it's either the water test or getting down and scraping on it to find out. Or of course, putting acid stain down only to have it wash off later whenever you wash the residue. And of course that's no fun. Whenever you're pouring fresh concrete that you intend to stain, pay particular attention to the finish. If you're pouring outside, then you can broom it. Broom finish is common because it gives you traction. Outside you tend to have more water and more standing water and you do need to have traction. A broom finish, although it is better for traction, will give you more of a stone-like appearance rather than the marbleized type appearance that you get with the real smooth finished concrete. So if you're still looking for a more marbleized appearance on the outside, you might consider a rock salt finish. Rock salt finish will still give you somewhat traction because of the little rock salt holes that forms in the concrete, but because it's hand finished, you get more of a smoother finish, so you get a little bit of marbleization still. Whenever you're pouring concrete inside, then of course the smoother the finish, the more marbleization you get. However, you can overdo it, so do not make the slab too tight. There's a difference between getting a nice smooth finish. They use those machine trials, the big machine trials. There's a big difference between getting a good finish and taking it too tight. Too tight is burnishing it like a mirror. There's no porosity there and it makes it hard for the stain to get through. If you do finish the slab too tight, a lot of times you'll have to do additional coats of stain because the first coat of stain, the acid will open the pores up then the second coat will actually get in and start doing its job. So, whenever you're pouring new concrete, don't make it too slick. If you're building a new house or a new business or it's a room add-on or that sort of thing, whenever you're building the walls, then usually they will brace the walls up with 2x4s. 
These 2x4s will either extend outwards to the ground or they will extend inwards to the concrete floor. When they extend inwards to the concrete floor, then they will hammer nails into the concrete. Whenever they pull these boards out and these nails out, it will chip out huge chunks of concrete in the floor. This is no way acceptable. So do not allow contractors to brace the walls via the braces going to the inside. Do not allow them to nail into that concrete floor. Also, do not allow your contractors or yourself if you're the one doing it to use markers on the concrete and most especially do not use red chalk in your chalk line. Red chalk will get into the pores of the concrete and stain that line there so that you will never get it up. You must use and you must insist that your contractors use blue chalk. Blue chalk will wash off very easy later. Red chalk will be a nightmare. Another major concern is whenever the HVAC guys come in and do their work or certain plumbers they'll use metal pipe. Whenever they're working with this metal pipe in order to thread it and in order to cut it they'll use oil so that the blades do not get dulled out. Do not let the HVAC guys or any plumbers that are intending on using any metal pipe use their cutters or set up inside on the slab where you intend to stain. Make sure that they do all of their cutting and their threading outside on the dirt. This oil that they use to protect their threaders and their blades if it gets into the concrete and into the pores of the concrete is a contaminant and it will prevent the stain from getting in and doing its job as well as it can. Instead of having a deep rich color you'll have a light version of that color because of that oil being down deep in the pores. Also it's hard to see that oil whenever you wash and clean the concrete. It'll only become apparent once the staining has been done. Finally, you need to protect the concrete from any types of contaminants. Acid stain works on concrete. It does not work on paint, glues, oil, grease, curing agents, or any other type of contaminant. So be sure and cover the concrete with something like a heavy paper or a cardboard. If you do cover the concrete with a cardboard or a, a sheathing type material, if it's printed, and has any kind of printing on it, arrows or words or that sort of thing, make sure that the printed side is up. Ensure that the side down touching the concrete has no ink and no print on it because if it does, then you're going to end up tattooing the concrete and you don't want that. And that concludes the things to know about new concrete section. Camouflage your concrete! Yeah!